What is going on, everyone? Christian Pickdogs.com here with the wraparound. We're going to be breaking down the NHL action for you going down on Thursday, January 4th, 2024. And, uh, you know, just a reminder, if you haven't already, smash that thumbs up if you like this content. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. We just passed 100 million views here on our YouTube channel. You know, couldn't have done it without you guys. You guys were here since day one. Uh, or even if you haven't been here since day one, we appreciate every like, every subscription, you know, every every little bit of love and support. We do these for you guys, all these videos, these long form videos, the daily videos. So thank you guys for the love and support. The wraparound would not be what it is, you know, if it wasn't for you. So thank you guys so much for that. If you're looking for my best bets on the board, though, I like a lot of these games on the NHL card. But if you're looking for my best bets of the best, make sure you head to pickdogs.com. Click that premium picks tab at the top of the page. Going to have a fair bit of action today from the NF, uh, excuse me, NHL and college hoops. Um, so well, just check me out with the daily pass or long-term pass or pair me up with one of the other great handicappers at the website or maybe more than one. It's part of the multi-capper promotion. I'm telling you guys, you can't go wrong. We are ready to make you some money. It is a loaded weekend. So this is a great weekend to, or a great time to hop on a, uh, a long-term pass. But that's later today. Right now we're looking at the NHL action for Thursday, had a two-game card yesterday. I think we had a split yesterday, so not bad. Cash with the Devils. The Maple Leafs barely got out of Anaheim. I, uh, um, that's another story for another day. But 13-game card on Thursday. You guys know the drill. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get into it. To kick off Thursday's card, we head to the TD Garden where the Boston Bruins host the Pittsburgh Penguins. And, you know, the Pittsburgh Penguins were playing some solid hockey. Then they kind of stumbled and fell flat on their faces against uh, Washington to end their three-game homestand. And while the Penguins have been playing some solid hockey as of late, 7-2-1 and one in their last 10, the majority of that, that success, for the most part, has come at home. Two of the three losses have come on the road where they are here. And now they take on a Boston Bruins team that's won four straight. They're coming back home where they've played their best hockey going back to last year. And uh, they're 11-2-3 and three at home this season. We're getting a reasonable price with the Boston Bruins, and, I, and part of that is because the Penguins have been playing so well. But I still think that the Bruins are right now are just the better team, playing the better hockey, at least over the last uh, last week, week and a half. So give me the Boston Bruins in this one. I think they take advantage of, uh, of the Penguins and, and take advantage of home ice in this one. Now we head to the Bell Center for an Atlantic Division clash between the Montreal Canadiens and the Buffalo Sabres. And, you know, I see the Montreal Canadiens as home dogs here, and I'm kind of left scratching my head as to why. I know they haven't played the best hockey as of late. Both these, both these teams, four and six in their last ten games. Montreal, well, they just had their three-game win streak snapped uh, with a 4-3 win over the Dallas Stars. I was wrong in that game. I thought the, uh, the Montreal Canadiens just wanted to come home, and they did, but... They left Dallas with a win as sizable underdogs, and now they come into this one, you know, trying to build on that momentum here. And I just, I think I just trust the uh, the Montreal Canadiens more in this spot. I don't know why the Sabers are favored when Montreal head to head has won the last three meetings and five of the last six. Uh, Buffalo has been less effective on the road this season. Granted, Montreal has been less effective at home, but they are on home ice in this one. We're getting plus money with them here. Um, I just. I think I just like I said, I think the wrong team is favored here. I think it should be priced closer to a coin flip. So give me the Montreal Canadiens here at any sort of plus money we can get. Right now I'm getting around plus one twelve. Now we head to Madison Square Garden where the New York Rangers take on the Chicago Blackhawks. And for Chicago, well, it should tell you the state of where this team is at. That we're already at plus three ten odds as an underdog, minus four hundred underdogs as favorites. And we're only 30-plus games into the season. I mean, yes, this is one of the best teams in the NHL against one of the worst, but the Blackhawks are just really, really bad. And um, you look at some of the recent games that they've played, you know, Chicago on a three-game losing streak. They've been outscored by a combined score 16-5 to in those three games. Outscored 11-1 to in their last two losses. The goaltending just hasn't been holding up, giving up four or more goals in six of their last 10 games. Um, and now you're going up uh, against a Rangers team that, you know, has had some inconsistencies as of late. They've split their last six games, but are still just a better team by a fair margin. By I shouldn't say a fair margin, by a country mile on paper. And um, I just think that this is a spot where the Rangers put the boots to the Chicago Blackhawks, get themselves a nice confidence building win, give the fans something to cheer about. Wouldn't surprise me they potted five, six goals in this game. Maybe they got over the total themselves. 
but I'm going to take the Rangers on the puck line in this one, try to get that outrageous minus 400 price down. Now we're going to the Wells Fargo Center where the Philadelphia Flyers take on the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Columbus Blue Jackets, well, they've been a hard team to figure out and a hard team to really try to find value on just because whenever you think you're going to back them and get that value, well, they go and crap the bed, and they've done it in five of their last six games. They played in a lot of close games. I will give the Columbus Blue Jackets that, but last time out against the Boston Bruins, it was 2-1 to one going into the third period, and then the Bruins just opened it up, and you know the, the Columbus Blue Jackets just had no answer, and this Columbus team just really has had, hasn't had much of an answer offensively for much of the year. Uh, if you look at their last 10 games, 3.5 goals per game is, is pretty good, but you know the defense at times has really let this team down especially in their last 10, allowing 4.3 goals per game. Philadelphia, just a much better defensive team here. And not only that, they could use a win. They've lost five of six as well. But head-to-head, -head, it's been all Philly. You know, going back to last year, the Flyers have won four straight meetings, including both meetings this season, by a combined score of 9-4. to four. I'm going to take the Flyers to win this one in regulation. I might put a little bit of a bet here on the minus 1.5 on the puck line as well. Get some plus money out of the wager, but for me, it's Flyers all day in this one. Now we head to the American Airlines Center where the Dallas Stars host the Colorado Avalanche in what many people could consider to be a playoff preview. These are two of the better teams in the Western Conference. The Dallas Stars are playing well right now. You know, they've won uh, seven of their last ten games, but they are coming off a home loss to the Montreal Canadiens last time out. While it's important to not overreact to one result, just didn't like how the Dallas Stars had to claw their way back in that game. It's not like they just, you know, let, uh, let one slip away and let Montreal rally. Dallas fell behind early, and it was Dallas doing the chasing. They cut, they made it close, but again, fell short. Now they welcome a Colorado team to town who's won three straight, five of six. You know, they got a couple of nice wins, including the win um, at home against the Islanders, and, um, you know, have, have done a decent job on the road. Not the best record on the road, eight, seven, and three, but they're starting to pick up their play once again, and the Colorado Avalanche and plus money are two things that you don't see together very often. And head to head, this matchup has been all Colorado the last you know year and a half. You know, going back to November 2022, um, Colorado's won four of the last five meetings, and you know they've won some of these fairly convincingly as well. So I'm going to take a shot here. I'm going to take the Colorado Avalanche at uh, at plus money in this one. Now we head to the XL Energy Center where the Minnesota Wild take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. And two teams that are kind of struggling right now. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that these are two teams that are extremely banged up. Uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning missing Mikhail Sergachev, Eric Chernak on the defensive end. Chernak is questionable for this game, so he may return. Uh, Hayden Fleury out indefinitely as well. So, you know, the, the Minnesota, excuse me, the Tampa Bay decor really banged up. Now, the offense is still fairly healthy. So obviously, Nick Paul, Braden Point, uh, Steven Stamkos, Nikita Kucherov, they're still fine. But again, it's it, you're still missing some key pieces, and a lot of Tampa Bay's offense, especially on the power play, runs through the defense. So those are some big losses for Minnesota. You're missing Jared Spurgeon, uh, Kirill Kaprizov. He's out until at least the middle of the month. Uh, Marcus Foligno's questionable. So to me, there's just a lot of question marks on the injury front here. And you look at some of the results for both of these teams. You know, Minnes uh, Tampa Bay has lost three of four. They've scored two goals or less in four of their last five games. Minnesota, same boat. They've scored five goals combined over the course of this three-game losing streak that they're on. I think this could just be another one of those physical slugfests. Like I said, the, the question marks here don't really help the cause either. Not Probably probably one of my least favorite games on the board, actually. But I'm going to go with the under 6.5 in this one. Like I said, until, uh, until we see some teams break out offensively in this one, got to lean towards a lack of goals. And I could easily see this being 4-2, whichever way you slice it. So give me the under 6.5 in this one. Next, we head to the Bridgestone Arena for the Nashville Predators versus Calgary Flames matchup. And both these teams are actually playing some decent hockey. I mean, Calgary, they've won five of their last seven. They're coming off a 3-1 road win over the Minnesota Wild, which is big for them considering they don't normally win many games on the road. Um, and Nashville, well, they've won back-to-back -back games after a bit of a rough stretch. And Nashville, well, they have played their best hockey at home this season, 12-9 and at home on the year, 57% win percentage. Um, the thing for me, though, head-to-head -head is that you know, these teams have traded wins back and forth in the last couple meetings, but Nashville, they've won eight of the last 10 meetings. The home team has won both meetings this season, and we're getting Nashville at a bit of a discounted price, maybe because of the recent form they've been in prior to that, and Calgary's won more games over the last couple weeks. 
I don't know, but I'm still going to take the Nashville Predators in this one at the cheap price, minus 122. Now we head to the Enterprise Center where the St. Louis Blues take on the Vancouver Canucks. And, uh, you know, two teams that are playing some, I don't want to say inconsistent hockey right now, but two teams that could definitely be stringing wins together a little bit better um, in their last few games. You know, Vancouver alternating wins and losses in each of their last five and four and three in their last seven games. Meanwhile, St. Louis back-to-back losses, but they've also split their last six and split their last ten if you go back a little bit further. But the thing for me here is that the St. Louis Blues um, the goal scoring has dried up in a big way as of late. You know, they've been able to win a game against Dallas two to one, but they've scored five goals combined in their last three games, two goals or less in four of their last six. And uh, you know, the defense can only do so much. The defense can only keep you in games for so much before the offense has to do its job, and it just hasn't been for the St. Louis Blues, the Vancouver Canucks. Their offense has been inconsistent in in spots, but more often than not, this team is good for three or four goals a night. They've scored four or more goals. Um, seven times in their last 10 games. Right now, I just trust the Canucks offense more than I trust the Blues. And the Canucks still respectable 10-6-2 on the road. Not far off from the Blues 11-6 record at home. I know the Blues getting plus money at home is tempting, but I got to go with the Vancouver Canucks here. I think they're just playing the better hockey. Now we head to the Mullet Arena where the Arizona Coyotes take on the New York Islanders. And this is an interesting matchup because, you know, the Arizona Coyotes play their best hockey at home at the Mullet Arena, a 66% win percentage, 12-6 and six on the year. But they've been inconsistent in their last four games. They took a loss against the Florida Panthers, took a loss against the Colorado Avalanche, but they're still 6-2 and two in their last eight games. So maybe getting them at some plus money or even money uh, or at a coin flip price um, at home, definitely worth a look. On the other side, the Islanders, they've dropped uh, three of four and six of their last nine. Um, and right now it's sort of been that, you know, the, remember how I said the new style of the Islanders hockey is playing these higher scoring games, not necessarily lower scoring battles like we were used to in the past with the Islanders, but now the, they're giving up the goals and the offense is looking more like the old Islanders where trying to win low scoring games. But I think that's where we can maybe find an edge here. You look head to head between these two teams, even though they only play each other twice a year, more often than not, the under eight and two in the last 10 meetings between these two teams I think the goaltending shows up to play here. I think this is a very physical matchup. I think it's going to be a low-scoring one. So I'm going to go with the under 5.5 here. But I'm going to drop something in here for those of you who just actually watch through the video and don't just skip through. Something to take note of. Of those t last 10 meetings, in four of the last five at least, there, one team has been shut out. And in, and in uh, five of the last eight meetings, there's been a shutout. The losing team in nine of the last 10 meetings has scored two goals or less. So... If you think that one of these teams could get shut out, which I definitely think is, is on the table, I think it's definitely worth taking a look at maybe an under 0 0.5 team total. If you like Arizona get shut out, you're getting under 0 0.5 on the team total at plus 1,000, under 1 1.5 at plus 290. For the Islanders, under 0 0.5 is plus 1,200, under 1.5 is plus 370. So definitely think there's a nice way to make some plus money with this one too. Now we had to climb at Pledge Arena where the Seattle Kraken take on the Ottawa Senators. And, you know, the Seattle Kraken, I got to give them credit, you know, for a team that I crapped on for much of the year. Uh, it was really slow out of the gate. They're actually playing some decent hockey right now. They still have a losing record at home. Eight, uh, eight wins in only 19 games this season. But they've won five in a row. They're coming off of the win over the Vegas Golden Knights in the Winter Classic. And they've done a good job winning games, you know, especially with defense as of late. This, this Seattle team has won five straight, and they've only scored three goals or less in all five of those games. They've scored three goals or less in each of their last seven. They've only given up a combined five goals during this uh, during this win streak. I think they just got to keep it going here, and I think they can keep it going here against a, an Ottawa team that's had problems giving up goals left and right for the most part on the road. I mean, you look at their last, uh, their last six or seven road games. So they've played seven road games in their last ten. In all uh, but one of those road games, the Senators have given up at least four goals. So right now you got just a Kraken team in solid defensive form against this uh, Senators team that really just is giving up goals left and right. And we're getting them at a reasonable price here. I got to take the Kraken here at minus 125. Next, we head to the T-Mobile Arena where the Vegas Golden Knights take on the Florida Panthers in another matchup that was a Stanley Cup Finals rematch. And, you know, we saw the, the first matchup between these two teams this year. 
uh, Florida got their revenge at home, 4-2, to two, taking down the Vegas Golden Knights. And I think Florida might be able to do the same here and sort of exercise some demons in Vegas. You know, the Vegas Golden Knights, we're back to saying that the honeymoon phase is, is over. I mean, this team has now lost five of their last six games, uh, six of their last eight. Am, am I by any means writing off the Vegas Golden Knights? Absolutely not. This team is going to be fine. They're going to be a playoff team. And at home, they're 13-3-2 this season. However, the Florida Panthers are back to picking up wins left and right. They've won five straight. They beat we won you know a couple of road games in that stretch as well. They beat Tampa Bay. They beat Arizona in Arizona, which is not necessarily the easiest thing to do. Still sounds crazy for me to say, but it's it's the truth. And I think the Florida Panthers have enough in the tank here to, to add to to Vegas' misery here. Not a game I'm rushing to the window to bet just because of all the, the variance in this game. But I'm gonna take a shot here if uh, if uh, I absolutely had to. I'd take a shot on the Florida Panthers at the coin flip price. Now we head to the Crypto.com Arena where the Los Angeles Kings take on the Detroit Red Wings. And the Los Angeles Kings definitely lost some of their luster in recent games. They've lost three straight and uh, lost to the Toronto Maple Leafs 3-0 last time out in what was a real get-right spot and a, uh, a desperation spot for the Maple Leafs. But, um, you know, the Kings are still a decent team. I'm not reading too much into that. You know, the losses to their opponents, you know, Toronto, Edmonton, and Vegas, three quality teams. So not going to fault the, the Kings too much for that. And we've known what the Kings have been for much of the season. They played their better hockey on the road. But as as much as that's the case, I just don't know if I can trust Detroit in this spot. You know, they're coming off 5-3 win over the San Jose Sharks. But they've still split their last six games. And they've lost seven of their last ten overall. And head-to-head, -head, the Kings have owned this matchup. The Kings have won six straight meetings, um, including both meetings uh, by one goal last season. Um, and they've won nine of the last 10 as well. They've scored four or more goals in eight of the last 10 meetings as well. So I'm going to take the, uh, the Los Angeles Kings here. I'm going to take them to win this one in regulation rather than mess around with the puck line, just given the nature of the series and how it's been a lot of one goal games. But I'm going to take them to win in regulation, get that minus 190 price down, something more manageable about minus 125. And our final game on Thursday's card takes us to the SAP Center where the San Jose Sharks host the Winnipeg Jets and the San Jose Sharks, again, need I say more, back to old habits, looking like the San Jose Sharks that started this season. Another loss and another loss by a pair of goals. A uh, 5-3 loss to the Detroit Red Wings at home. Now give San Jose a little bit of credit. The offense did show up a little bit, but once again, the defense failed this team as it's now seven of their last eight games with the, where the goaltending has given up at least four goals. Um... Just not a good look for this uh, for the San Jose Sharks team. And even though they have been at their best at home, they actually have a 33% win percentage at home, 6-10-2 and two, um, at home this season. Doesn't mean I'm, I'm going on my way to back them here. You know, it's not often that you're going to get a decent price and maybe even some plus money with a team to fade the Winnipeg Jets. We saw it with the Edmonton Oilers last week. Uh, Edmonton won that game 5 nothing. We're seeing it here with the Winnipeg Jets, who have won three straight, five of six, and seven of nine. A lot of those, or at least a couple of those, have been one-goal games, but none of those teams are, are the San Jose Sharks on the other side. Um, San Jose won the first meeting this season 2-1 to one at home, so maybe that's part of why the price is where it is, but I think that was when San Jose was sort of at least picking up picking up wins here and there. They're back to looking like the San Jose of old. And like I said, the Winnipeg Jets, for my money, just a far better team. So give me the Winnipeg Jets on the puck line to round things out. That's it. That's all the NHL action for Thursday, January 4th, 2024. Just a reminder, again, if you haven't already, smash that thumbs up if you like this content. Subscribe to our channel. And while you're here, make sure you hit that notification bell in the description of this video below to make sure that you get the newest and most up-to-date content here at Pick Dogs. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at PickDogs.com by clicking the Premium Picks tab at the top of the page. And make sure to let me know your NHL picks in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.